Hi, this is David from Mad Tech UK, sorting the good from the mad. Today we're looking at the Apple TV 4. We're going to do an unboxing and a review when it's connected to the TV set. So the model I have is the 32GB model, which retails for £129 in the UK. There's also a 64GB model, which retails for £169. Things to note before we continue. This is the first new Apple TV since the Apple TV 3 came out in 2012. The whole system's been updated. It features an A8 processor, an upgrade over the Apple TV 3's A5 processor, so it now matches that found in the Apple iPhone 6. You've got the 32GB and 64GB options, however the storage here is for apps, uh, downloads, to be stored on. It's not actually for movies to be added to. You can also now add game controllers because the system features Bluetooth 4.0, you've got HDMI 1.4, you've also got 7.1 audio output and Siri integration. So on that note, let's start unboxing. Now in typical Apple fashion, everything is very well laid out. The first thing we notice is the new Apple remote to the right hand side here with a glass pad at the top. That features gesture control so we can swipe across it left, right, up and down. We've got our Siri enabled button just here and we've also got the usual controls but we've got volume controls here as well so we can control TV or sound bar. Now the unit itself very small, very light as with the original. Then of course we have the Apple TV hockey puck as well. Now we can see it's nicely sealed in here. So we've got the usual sort of plastic wrapping here and it actually has black tape all around the edge concealing the ports. Now let's get that open and we'll have a look at this from the inside. So let's take that tape off and we'll have a look. On the bottom, there's a nice bit of tape there revealing the Apple logo. We'll put that to the side and then take off the edge strip. Now look at that lovely gloss black finish around the side there. How long before all the fingerprints cover that up? So on closer inspection, what have we got? Well, we've got an Ethernet port. We've got our HDMI 1.4 and power. We've also got a USB-C port, which can be used for diagnostic and servicing purposes. One thing we're missing over the Apple TV 3 is the optical audio out port, which is slightly annoying if you wanted to connect this directly to your AV system. However, as long as you can support HDMI 1.4, that obviously will send audio out via the HDMI lead. Now inside the box, obviously very well laid out, we've got a couple of extra things that we can remove here. So I can see uh, a little bit of instruction manual just hidden behind the box there. And inside there, as, as I said, we've got the instructions. We've also got a lightning cable because the remote in this case has to be charged rather than have its battery replaced. And on the bottom, you'll actually see a familiar iPhone lightning port. Now one downside here of course is that you're given a lightning cable um, but at nowhere can you actually plug that into the Apple TV itself so that the remote could charge directly from the Apple TV. Um, that, that would be quite a cool feature. Instead you're probably going to have to use your standard iPhone adapter um, or connect to a USB port on your computer. Now in the next box there uh, we've got the power lead. Now I, I often find that the Apple power leads, the sort of rubberized coating on them can tend to either degrade or, or, or colour change a little bit over time and this one feels to be the same sort of rubberised coating. So that's all the elements, let's hook it into a TV and see how it performs. I've just plugged the Apple TV in and gone through the setup process so here we are with a fresh Apple TV 4 installation. We see a much more limited set of applications initially listed compared to the Apple TV 3 but we've got our standard movies option and TV shows, so we can do our purchases from iTunes. But alongside that, a new feature now, the App Store. Uh, a quick look in there reveals some of the apps, and particularly just below you saw a few things there like iPlayer and Netflix. They're now not loaded by default, probably to encourage people to use the iTunes Store, um, but you can go and add them in as necessary. 
I used to find the Apple TV 3 actually had a lot of applications that I never used. Uh, things like sport apps, for example, things I didn't really watch, certain uh, news feeds that I wouldn't normally look at, um, and now it's up to you to customise the interface. Now one area I like to dive into with a new system like this is actually the settings options to see what new features we can uh, mess around with um, and enable and disable and so forth. So if we go in here we can actually see we've got options for audio and video control and we've got our usual sort of setup options here we can calibrate the screen one thing that interests me is the ability to reduce loud sounds now particularly if you don't want to disturb the children at night for example um, this could be a handy feature to turn on and it's supposed to balance the loud sounds from the quiet sounds something the previous Apple TV didn't offer now under the general settings we've got options for Siri here as well um, I switched that on during setup and additionally, we've got some new screensaver options. I'll show these later, but there's a particularly nice aerial footage one, um, which is a little bit more interactive than the old National Geographic one that you used to see. So it shows kind of a live aerial view of cityscapes. One other area is the remotes and devices option. So we can adjust the tracking sensitivity on the remote. We can also add other Bluetooth devices. So this might be keyboards, headsets, for example, or game controllers. And you'll notice at the bottom here, we've also got home theatre control. So we can actually um, have the Apple TV, because we've got HDMI 1.4 support, uh, carry out some control, turn on and off our TV or receiver. And also we can add our remote to the volume control settings. So the new Apple TV remote features the up-down volume controls. You can actually go into a learning mode just here uh, and have it learn the remote control of whichever device it is you want to control that volume. One downside to this rather smart remote is that if you need a replacement, however, it's £65. Now, for the £129 32GB Apple TV model, that is half the cost if you need to replace this remote. By comparison, the original Apple TV remote is only £15 for a replacement. This is the one thing that actually worries me here, because I have two small children, and if they get hold of this remote and decide to destroy it, that is an expensive replacement. So if we go back out to the main interface, I'm going to have a look at the movies option. You can see the interfaces, rather than having that standard black background, things are lighter. Um, it almost appears to increase the resolution, although we are still running at 1080p. One of the limitations, of course, here is that the Apple TV has not been upgraded to support 4K footage. Um, I myself am not worried about this because I don't have a 4K TV yet. Um, but, of course, if I change in the next year or two, it would be nice to have that support. Now, I'm going to run up a film here, so I'm going to stream this from movies I've already purchased. I don't expect the quality really to be any different from the Apple TV 3 here, simply because in order to play back this movie, we're running at full HD 1080p, exactly as the previous Apple TV did. The only difference here is that the new Apple TV obviously has a faster processor. It can support 60 frames per second rather than the 30 of the original uh, Apple TV 3. But in conventional playback, I don't really expect there to be any difference. Now, the one thing that the Apple TV uh, can't do, of course, is, is increase your broadband speed. So in order to actually stream from the internet, you're still reliant on the speed of your broadband. What it does have, however, is the new... It, the incorporation of AC Wi-Fi mode so you may find that wireless streaming around your house has actually improved in speed. Now the quality of playback there obviously you're seeing this uh, recorded onto a second camera but I'm very happy with the initial quality that I'm seeing. As expected it's full HD. Now you can use the trackpad on the remote to scoot round or to try and track ahead or track back through the film it's very, very sensitive. That's even on medium setting. Um, as you slow down, though, you can get to a finer level of control. Now, in reality, the, the lack of 4K support is actually slightly disappointing because if you are contemplating upgrading from the Apple TV 3 to the Apple TV 4 and you use it for 
video primarily, uh, movie playback, TV show playback, you're not actually going to see really any improvement here so far as I can tell. I use Apple TV 3 already at home and to be honest the, the quality of footage, the fact that it's playing back the movie smoothly doesn't feel any different. And on that note we're going to jump to one of the things that Apple does best and that's their App Store. Now, Apple feel a little bit late to the table here because other similar streaming devices such as the Amazon Fire TV already have an app store. But one of the things I've found with the Amazon one, for instance, is it offers up apps that it can actually return and say these are not compatible with your Fire TV, which is a bit of a letdown. Now, the Apple TV apps are going to be compatible. They're going to be there released for a reason. So I'm going to start by grabbing one of the sort of standard UK apps, and that's the BBC iPlayer one. Um, it doesn't come installed by default, but I'd like to add it to my setup. So while that downloads, let's have a little browse around the App Store and see what's on offer. Now you've got your usual sort of different categories, best new apps, uh, best paid for, this kind of thing. There's a selection of games, you've got a selection of streaming options there such as YouTube, Netflix, Channel 4, iPlayer that we've just selected. And then we've also got the uh, games options. So things like Angry Birds Go, um, we've got Sonic there, a variety of different racing games. I'm not entirely convinced this is the platform for gaming. I think this is very much targeted at the casual gamer. Um, dedicated gamers are going to put aside time. They're going to use something like an Xbox or a PlayStation 4. Um, and I can't really see where this is placed other than just for casual gaming. There is a gaming controller. It costs an additional £39.95. Um, that's quite expensive really for what you're actually getting. It's a Bluetooth controller, but there are obviously similar price controllers available for the Xbox and PlayStation, but with a larger selection of games. And also most of the games you're going to find there are going to be much more high powered games. Um, a lot of things we're seeing here, of course, a few retro games like Sonic, um, Tower Dash, Bird Climb, Mr. Jump. These are all very sort of simple games. There's a few slightly more uh, enhanced games. I'm just looking at Off-Road Legends 2 here, which are going to be a little bit more demanding on the system. And similarly, Asphalt 8. But these aren't necessarily going to be as good as obviously what you would find on the dedicated games console. Other apps that I think might be more useful to put on the TV are maybe some of the, the more sort of educational apps. You've got things for younger children who aren't going to be um, likely to necessarily use more sort of hardcore games consoles. I think it'd be nice to use some of the apps that offer more of a, an educational standpoint, the kind of thing that you as a family could all interact with on the TV. I don't think maybe young children are going to necessarily use the more hardcore games consoles and maybe you would want just a simple little game that you could use here. The remote itself features uh, tilt sensors very much like a Wii console, targeted more at a younger audience. And while I've been talking, you can see that the uh, lovely aerial view screensaver has just kicked in. Um, that's something I'm really impressed with. Even though it's just a screensaver, it does look really lovely. Now that we've got iPlayer installed, let's dip in and have a quick look at what this offers. So as with any streaming uh, application here, we've got a selection of shows we can browse around. I'm just going to pick one. Very quickly, I do have a fast broadband connection, but very quickly I'm given access to the show that I've selected. Again playback in full HD it does look very good on the TV set. Now one of the advantages here for example is that in the UK BBC iPlayer didn't exist on the Apple TV 3 as an application. You could use it but you would need to stream from another iOS device. So for anybody who doesn't have a smart TV already it does add a little bit of a bonus buying the Apple TV 4. Next up I really wanted to try one of the games so I've gone into Angry Birds Go. I've already downloaded it and I'm just going to kick off a quick race. The key thing here is I wanted to see how smooth the playback was, how good the image quality is. Is this actually going to hold up running from a TV streaming device? Now, although this is obviously quite cartoony graphics, the playback is smooth. The control isn't too bad from the Siri remote. I personally would prefer to use the games controller. And one thing that we can also do back on the main interface is drag the application around and you'll notice we've got folders here similar to any other iOS device. That's really handy if we obviously bring in a few different games we can make a games folder. 
Now the review wouldn't be complete without testing out Siri, so if we hold the Siri button, I'm going to say, what's the weather like this week? And there's the weather forecast for this week in my area. Next up, I'm going to try, what's the weather like in New York this week? And there's the New York forecast. I could swipe up and I could actually reveal some more information there, but I'm going to try a few more options here. Show me comedy films. Superb. Show me films by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Perfect, although a somewhat limited selection initially there. I wouldn't say they were his finest performances. Let's try Show Me the Terminator. OK, so those came back. For some reason, not showing Arnold Schwarzenegger. Next up, for those who want to stream from their local computer or server system, the Computers app is still available. The interface hasn't really changed here at all, and one of the annoyances I have is that there's no improvement to the search facility here, so if you have quite an extensive personal library, it can still take a while to find what you're after. I'll try playing back one of the films that I've purchased from my local system, so we've got Ant-Man here, and it plays back perfectly. Once again, there's no difference really in the resolution, there's no difference in the playback of movies, so far as I'm concerned, from the Apple TV 3. However, if we swipe down on the control pad on the remote, I have additional information about the film, I also have audio controls, and I can set my language and optionally put on the reduce loud sounds option. Now I've been trying this out and I do actually find the, that there is a lot less sort of boomy sounds when playing back a movie such as this, which can be great, especially if you're playing at night time, you don't want to disturb the neighbors or anybody else in the house. Alternatively, of course, Bluetooth headphones. So are you mad to miss it or mad to buy it? Now the question really is, are you an Apple fan or not? If you are, then chances are you already own a lot of other Apple products. So the integration with the Apple TV is very good. You can obviously stream from your iOS devices. You can stream from your local Mac computer or, 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 or any computer running iTunes for that matter. Now I've been running the device for about a week. I have noticed one or two minor problems. Um, one specifically when streaming from my local computer using the computer's application, I had gone through roughly 30 gigabytes of HD movies and then playback began to stutter. I could still stream from the iTunes Movies app, but the, the local footage from my computer using the computer's application would simply stutter and grind to a halt. So I wasn't able to stream further films without going into settings and performing a restart. This is obviously a, a bug, I would suspect, um, with the current 9.1 operating system. I found several other users on one of the Apple forums also experiencing the same issues. Now, on the assumption that future OS releases will obviously fix bugs and make the system more stable, I do think the Apple TV 4 is a very good unit, uh, particularly if you're already an Apple user. It's key differentiator to the Apple TV 3 being the App Store and the inclusion of Apple Music. Therefore, if you're already in the Apple ecosystem, I am going to say that you would be mad to miss it but I'm going to qualify that by giving it a rating of 7 out of 10. And I simply say that's because of the system maturity. And hopefully, over time, that will improve as more apps get released and new operating systems come out. On that note, I'm going to leave it there. I've been David for MadTech UK. Thanks for watching. Check back for more reviews later.